It's September 2019. I'm 18 now. I made it. I feel victorious crossing over into adulthood, like a piece of me can finally be sealed. But on this joyful day, I am haunted by a shade. I dreamt last night that I made it to this morning and the world ended. My mind destroyed my most important day in the most creative way, filling me with fear, waking me with panic, making me feel I didn't deserve to see today. I got so close to what I wanted but couldn't escape the fear of my past. The shadow lingering paces behind me, always trying to darken the sky in front of me. I'm here looking teary-eyed into the mirror. A shadow fills the room, so I close my eyes and open to find I'm on the other side, watching myself cry at the exact same time almost two years ago. I reach out and I'm pulled into the body standing before me. The glass shatters. I feel the familiar flood in like a virus infecting me, trapping me in the past. It's three in the morning, my brain's favorite time to attack. All this fear floats above my head, condensed in a dark cloud, striking me with lightning. There's a test coming up. Crying and studying are synonymous. I walk in breathless, then I fail another one. I try to remain calm, but the panic burns through my body. I'm restless yet devoid of energy, tensing my legs until the pain makes a chore of walking. The daily fatigue, the loss of sleep are all just, just spiraling in, constricting around me, hissing in my ear, and I, I can't breathe. My chest is compressed, the collar on my shirt is choking me. My heart is pounding and breaking the sound barrier, my eardrums burn. I have to go, I have to leave, tell them you're fine, get to walking, walking somewhere, somewhere outside, out the doors, I have a class, but I'm outside somewhere. I can't focus on where I am, I just have to get away, away from something I can't can't approach or think of. I just want to breathe, but each breath that escapes is sucked back in until a void is created around me. I find a quiet space. I find a moment of silence under the broad crown of an oak tree. I sit for 15 minutes, bathing in the calm, absorbing it from the air. Then I hear the bell. It's time to go back. Clenching my teeth until it looks like a smile, cracking my jaw, the true emotion begins to show. It's a performance getting through each day. It's January 2018, and I'm starting to lose faith. My lungs are on fire. I am fire. Everyone I love winces with pain when they touch me. My fingertips blacken. Charcoal dust fills every ridge. I press them to paper, jot down a few words, and it feels like I'm bleeding. But I look down, and for once, there's no wound. A momentary calm fills me as I transcribe my feelings. For the first time in five years, genuine peace for a couple breaths. Then it's back in the blaze. The smoke ruins the bliss. I'm back at my mirror. It's in pieces on the floor, but in the blank frame before me is my reflection, a condensed mass of wasted time and wasted tears. I look with burning intent, staring directly at my reflection as I utter the seal on my fate. I am not proud to be you. No one would want to be you. That was my last glance into the mirror. After I avoided my reflection to bar any view of my shrinking figure, skipped meals taking their toll. As my body lost weight, my shadow only grew bigger. Tomorrow is May 23rd, and I feel inside my already dread-filled body a cosmic level of anxiety, a search for a way to leave this time, to avoid reliving the reality. There's anxiety crushing my throat in a singularity. I, inside my head, I scream to escape. I cannot go through this day. I cannot face each event that throughout today that added to the belief that I should take my life away. But I watched the replay knowing where this day is leading, fearing each moment, each fracture in my mind. I get home, I break down, I ask to schedule therapy next week, knowing I have no intention of attending. 9 p.m., the contemplation rises. I consider every avenue available to me. 10 p.m., I write the letter in a blind rage, saying goodbye to myself, saying goodbye to everyone. 11 p.m., I sit with sharp scissors in my hand, thinking about when the deed will be done. In that moment, I'm sent from my body. 
I'm screaming, trying to tell me not to do it. He can't hear me. I try to leave, but every door opening leads to the same scene. I am meant to see this again. I can't get within reach to grab the weapon. Suddenly, I watch the wounds redirect from fatal and planning to superficial and execution. I watch my shaking body hide the blade, then cry into the fur of my cat, my cat who never left my side, whose eyes I looked into finding the good of the world, the hope, the undying love that countered my deadly fear. I seal the note in an envelope, throwing it in a drawer never to be opened. In that return to reality, a calm floods the room. I sit beside myself, put my arm around his shoulder, kiss his forehead and dry his tears. I tuck his weak frame into bed, then walk quietly to the doorway. I turn around wanting to do more to help him, but I was there for me, not for him. As I passed through the doorway, I finally sealed off that night, finally able to discuss it without fear. I left the room and found it was now June 2018. I sat in on my first therapy session as he, a tearful, frightened deer, in the middle of a busy crossroad, spoke. When I heard my quivering voice echoing in the corner of the room, a piece of my heart broke, and I felt the compassion for myself that I was denied by the world. In that first meeting, I began to unblame myself, the world. I began to undo the first layer of damage, the isolation. Meeting three, I said a positive thing about me. I set goals to gain weight, started editing my poems, and by meeting five, I began gluing the shards of my identity slowly back together. Gradually, I grew to smile at my reflection. Each morning, I stood as my reflection watching a sly smile appear on his face, like grass blades slowly reaching through the blank cover of white snow. I was pulled back into him. He had healed enough. We were one again. It was August of 2018. Our book is almost done, and I am so consumed by the blue above that I barely noticed the pink parcels bursting, sweetening the air. A couple red leaves fall down from the cherry tree above, loosened by the breeze landing on our forearm. On our skin, for the first time in a while, we see beauty. I close my eyes, take a deep breath of fresh floral air, and float out of my body back to 2019, feeling relieved. I'm here, 18. It's February 2020, and that time has lost its bearing on me. I begin each day with the mantra that I use as a tribute to that time, a reversal of thoughts that now are not mine. I stand firmly like the old oak that soothed my panic. I look directly at my reflection, standing in opposition to every imperfection, the focus of my mind. And I declare clearly to myself, what's done is done. You made it through. And I will always say, I am so proud of you. Thank you.